Georgia is back and maybe better than ever. Kirby Smart's brought in a ton of talent in, in the recruiting trail and also in the transfer portal. And there are a ton of guys that are still returning that didn't have starting experience or had just very little experience and are ex- going to be expected to take on bigger roles. Again, this, this is uh, maybe his best team ever that he's had at Georgia. I think that they have a chance to win the entire SEC. They definitely have a chance to win the SEC East. They should be the favorite there. And they have a chance to, with Alabama, maybe needing a little bit of time to adjust to a new quarterback, a new wide receiver, a new starting running back. There's a lot of things that they're going through. It's still going to be Alabama, but Georgia definitely has a chance to do it. I think if there's ever going to be a year that Georgia's going to break through, this is going to be the year. Number 10, defensive end or outside linebacker, Adam Anderson. If you don't know Adam Anderson's name already, you need to get familiar with him. One of the guys who's just extremely explosive in terms of power and ex- just exploding off the ball, his quickness, it just his get off at the snap. Now he's going to have to learn how to be an every down player, and I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, but if you have to pick one thing that's just going to look for, I guess you can pick out that. But this is a guy who is extremely talented. Everybody's already talking about him. If you don't know who he is, do a little research. Go watch some film. He's a, a monster, and I think he's in store for a monster year. Another guy to watch, Nicobe Dean at linebacker. Leader of the defense, led the team in tackles with 71. Another guy that I think we're going to be talking about a lot at the end of 2021. Just a natural playmaker who knows what he's doing. He knows the defense. He's the leader of the defense. He can get guys into position. And just this is a loaded defense for Kirby Smart. And guys like Anderson and Dean are going to lead the way. Number eight, running back Zamir White. Now Milton and Cook are options here as well. But White is... The guy who had hit 779 yards and 11 touchdowns last year. I think he's going to be the starter. and He's going to obviously be challenged for time for touches. And that's not anything new to him. That's just the nature of Georgia. You're going to have a ton of talented players on the roster. So you can expect there to be competition, whether that's at a running back or any other position. You just know that's going to happen, but Zamir White is talented. He's shown that he can be reliable, so I think that gives him a little bit of an edge right now, and it's the reason why he's been the starter in the past. Number seven, safety, Tyke Smith. The West Virginia transfer comes in. One of the big splashes that Kirby Smart made in the transfer portal was a third-team All-American, first-team All-Big 12 last year. He's going to give Kirby Smart a little flexibility to move him around the field, put him near the line of scrimmage, drop him back, you name it. That's flexibility and versatility that you don't get from a lot of other safeties. Number six, offensive tackle Jamari Saylor. Saylor has 36 games of experience, and he's faced some of the most explosive pass rushers that we've seen in college football. So eventually your offensive line is either going to sink or swim, and the thing is with Sailor is he's faced so many guys. You know, he sees Anderson, he saw Aziz Ojolari last year, excuse me, Ojolari. Just so many pass rushers that are going to make you better or you're just going to quit. So the fact that he's good isn't really a surprise because the games really aren't that difficult for him because it's not anything that he hasn't seen. So or I should say there's still going to be difficult matchups that he'll face, but the fact that he sees this on a regular basis means that mentally he's not going to be out of a game because he knows what he's getting into. It's just a matter of how does that specific player play? How can he beat that specific player? Number five, tight end Eric Gilbert. Now, there are reports that he's moving to wide receiver and the fact that they're going to be able to put him and Darnell Washington on the same on the field at the same time. They could do that whether they played both tight end or one of them played tight end, one's wide receiver. It doesn't really matter. Gilbert is just a natural playmaker. Originally, people thought when he transferred from LSU that he was going to go back home to Georgia. He originally committed to Florida but then decommitted and then ended up back with the dogs with the passing attack, needing a new playmaker with the loss of one of their best. 
Eric Gilbert is a huge pickup, a perfect pickup for this team, and someone that you're going to have to watch on a regular basis. Now, teams can't put too much pressure on him because they have so many other options, but there are some questions at wide receiver in terms of who will actually be able to step up. Is it going to be Jermaine Burton? It will, you know, with George Pickens out, it's going to be hard to find a go-to guy right away, but Gilbert is definitely someone that can fill that role early on for for his quarterback. Speaking of that quarterback, JT Daniels is the guy. I don't know why it took so long to get him in the starting lineup, and I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to go, we're not going to go into that. JT Daniels elevated this offense to a new level. It was a level that we hadn't seen from anybody else last year, and he is a big reason why Georgia is going to be a contender in the SEC, not just in the SEC East. Over 1,200 yards with 10 touchdowns and two picks in his limited time. He's the reason why this team is going to rise to the top. He's the X factor that they needed, and he's the X factor that they now have and can utilize. Number three, George Pickens. So I didn't put, should have put a position in there. I did not. I apologize. He's, it's unlikely that he's going to play, but I wanted to recognize him just because he is that good. Um, it's tough to see a player go down with an injury, especially one that's going to affect the season. But Georgia's not going to be hurting too much because they have talent like Gilbert behind them, Darnell Washington, Jermaine Burton. There's just to uh, so many guys behind them that losing him isn't the biggest deal, even though he's a really, really good player. Number two, defensive tackle Devontae Wyatt. Wyatt is super underrated because people look at number one, who is Jordan Davis. Wyatt gets overlooked just because he doesn't make a ton of plays. He only had 25 tackles and two tackles for loss. Uh, so I should say he doesn't make a ton of plays that show up on the stat sheet, doesn't show up in the box score. But this is a guy who is very tough to move, even with two players. Great strength in his frame. Great power to keep guys away from him. Good hands, and he and Jordan Davis are going to be two of the best in all of college football. Jordan Davis was a second-team All-SEC selection. Another guy that doesn't make a ton of plays that make the box score, but a guy who could impact the game, a guy who can definitely do whatever he wants, and he's a former basketball player who's just got insane size to his frame. It, it just it's crazy what they can do and as you can see this defense is going to be just fine Kirby Smart has a ton of players to utilize a ton of talent and Georgia is going to be scary to face in 2021